welcome to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. A pimp in Oregon is suing Nike for $100 million, claiming that the company failed to include a warning on its Air Jordan sneakers that they could be used as dangerous weapons after he used his own pair to beat a man. In other pimp news from the Pacific Northwest, Bill Gates continues to pimp out your privacy and data to the NSA and any other Fakakta spy agency willing to give him a few bucks. But rather than use a sneaker, this pimp deploys his company's software and products, including Skype, as a dangerous weapon against the constitutional rights of unsuspecting customers of the pimp's products. Will Pimp Gates sue himself when he gets caught? Interesting existential question, Stacey Herbert. Max, it appears we're flat backing for Bill Gates, and he's not even paying us for it. Well, isn't that the truth? Ever since he was, what, twice convicted predatory monopolist, it's all about Bill. <laughs> Bill, Bill, Bill. Well, I thought of this when I saw somebody tweet out this photo of Chris Hedges. Chris Hedges says, we must either defy the corporate state or accept our extinction as a species. We have been stripped of the power to express dissent or affect change. Rebellion is the only way to remain fully human. Now, in that context, I was shocked to see on the front page, this is a later edition, so it was in the back page, but on the front page of the Sunday Times, they had Gates Tops World Popularity Poll. He was voted by people of the world the most admired person in the world. People tend to fall in love with their oppressors. It's the Stockholm Syndrome. It's the Stockholm Syndrome. And he has created a virtual prison with his buggy products. <laughs> And uh, it's a monopoly position that he uses to fund his enterprise, which include now in bed with other intellectual property whores like Monsanto. Well, as Chris Hedges says, rebellion is the only way to remain human. But we, we have the Redmond syndrome, I would say. They're up in Redmond, Washington, uh, Microsoft. And we appear, most people seemed quite happy to remember when Microsoft products had, they had 97% of the desktop that's being broken up a bit with Apple and Macintosh. But most people still use Internet Explorer and all their, the, the services and software he sells. And it's always been buggy. Now, that was always like a famous feature of Microsoft products. And that's why people moved to Apple, because it didn't have those, pro, those features. But now, only now have we learned that it's because we're not human. We've been harvested. We're being harvested for our privacy and our data for these corporations that the NSA works for. Yeah, it's true that Apple's cut into the business and uh, Google's Android, et cetera. But I think really the true challenge was open source and Linux, which was an open source platform where engineers got together to react to Bill Gates' monopoly, and they created something better called Linux and other open source software. Similarly, the way in which programmers got together and decided, let's do something better than the central bank system, and they created Bitcoin. Look. In the Constitution, uh, in the Declaration of Independence, there's this phrase, uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And what is the pursuit of happiness? In many ways, it's the freedom to be free from fear. And guys like Bill Gates have taken that away from Americans and taken it away from people around the world. They no longer enjoy a life free from fear because of the unbelievably corrupt products Bill Gates and Microsoft Corporation have have foisted onto the world, which takes away people's basic right to be free from fear. Well, they have a reason not to be free from fear, because they are actually less secure. Now, I see over and over on my Facebook page and Twitter, people are happy that the National Security Agency, the NSA, is spying on them, because they claim that it makes them feel safer. And yet, the fact is, all of the evidence proves that they're actually less safe. Let's look at some headlines regarding that. American and British spy agencies have intentionally weakened security for many decades. We are still now having an encryption that is about 1,000 times weaker than originally planned. So our encryption across the internet is 1,000 times weaker than originally planned because the NSA and GCHQ just cannot find the talent that is good enough to, to spy without having back doors. They need the back door open because they're lame, lame spies. We well, have to decode some of the phrases you hear from people who say they want to feel safer. Mm. 
that you have to decode that and understand what people are actually saying is they want to be dependent on the government more mm. because they're lazy. And the result is is obvious because of you just look at it, the average American, for example, uh, they're obvious it's the product of laziness, the fact that they've gotten into a state of being where they are v obese and stupid. That's the result of laziness, not they don't feel more secure. So let's be clear about what they're really saying. Well, I think also if you're, you know, as Chris had just said, to be more human, you need to rebel against this. But I think in a way, because the corporations have so atomized us and make, made us like just anonymous cogs in this big machine, in a way, I think a lot of people feel quite more human that there's somebody out there who cares to observe them through this little, you know, camera on my compute, my iPad. They think, well, gee, somebody cares to look at me. Look what I'm doing. I'm drinking a cup of coffee, <laughs> as one would often tweet. <laughs> you know, when the Allied forces liberated the uh, concentration camp of Auschwitz, uh, one of the uh, comments that the prisoners made was that not only were they starving from food, lack of food, but they were starving from human contact. Mm. And just a simple hug from the Red Army, the, the Russians who liberated uh, these concentration camps and who basically, you know, won World War II, let's be honest about it. They um, noted that this starving for affection from a simple hug was as important as food. So when people say, we love Bill Gates because we're living in the prison he built, and when he acknowledges us, we feel as though we're being hugged by, by Bill digitally, it's an indication they live in a, an Auschwitz-type environment, a digital Auschwitz that Bill Gates built for them, and they're dying. So you, you have, as the New Scientist points out, as this article refers to a New Scientist quote, the internet is full of holes. The spy agencies in the U.S. and U.K. have forced technology suppliers to deliberately weaken security measures in the online computing systems that everyone uses. As a result, they may have compromised everybody's security since the vulnerabilities can be exploited by anybody who discovers them. So. While there are many people who are very lonely out there and might like to be watched by some anonymous person, that anonymous person can be anybody now because the NSA and CHQ are not good enough to hack on their own and they need the door left wide open for them. You know, anybody could walk in the back door. Anybody can come in. It could be Charles Manson sitting in his high security prison out in California. He could be sitting there leering at you. Maybe you might like that, but most people don't. Well, let's get back to the connection between surveillance and obesity, because the surveillance technology, you say, could be surveilled by anyone. They're not being surveilled by security, looking for ways to keep people secure. They're selling the access to marketing corporations and big pharma and big agra and big consumer products companies who then spy on you in ways to help them sell you stuff more trans fat foods, more junk food, more junk credit, everything to make you unhealthy, more drugs, uh, everything that makes you lazy, obese, and stupid, i.e. American. Uh, that's what they're in it for, and they're succeeded because you've got the jobless mass of obese troglobites waddling around in their little tricycles at Walmart looking for new ways to help plumb the nether regions of their intestines because it's all clogged up thanks to Bill Gates and the 24-7 surveillance apparatus which is meant to keep people uh, the way that they are. Just look at the average Walmart shopper and throw up. <laughs> well, you mentioned selling stuff and of course this comes to this headline here. Yahoo malware turned European computers into Bitcoin slaves. Search firm remains silent on how its ad servers infected Windows PCs of visitors to homepage. So Windows PCs are the ones targeted in this because, of course, they're vulnerable. They have many back doors. Bill Gates has left so many back doors on all of his products, and all of these Windows manufacturers of computers have left many back doors. They each have their own back door, so there's multiple back doors open. This malware. Uh, that Yahoo, you, well, Yahoo targeted ads towards their consumers in Europe, not in America. So it could be the NSA who is turning computers in Europe into Bitcoin slaves. Well, Bitcoin is the Bill Gates slayer. Bitcoin is the NSA slayer. Bitcoin is the Janet Yellen and the Federal Reserve Bank slayer. And yes, of course, the pursuit of happiness will out. And it'll invade the faulty, buggy backdoors of Yahoo and other uh, internet giants to create 
Bitcoin mining operations to empower the people to resist. Bitcoin <laughs> is the currency of resistance. I've said this for years, and it's so true. Now, Marissa Mayer, the CEO of Yahoo, of course, said recently that the reason why she allowed the NSA to put all these back doors into their software was because this was a patriotic thing to do. And you see her silence, the company's refusal to say how this malware was even able to uh, exploit Yahoo. So Yahoo has been criticized for not doing more to aid users infected by the faulty adverts. Dan Farber of technology site CNET says that, quote, at this point, Yahoo hasn't addressed any of the details, such as how the malware exploit got into its web pages, how many users are impacted, and what victims of the attack should do. The company may still be gathering data, and you may still be a, a Bitcoin slave. Now, this is the, the whole thing that has, we've all become slaves because of the NSA and all these exploits and back doors. Well, you said something there that's very interesting, is that uh, the CEO of Yahoo, uh, Marissa... Uh, Mayor. Mayor. Um, silent. Yeah. Now that her product and her company has been violated because she left the back door open for the NSA, which she claims was an act of patriotism. Mm. When any reading of any document, such as the U.S. Constitution, would identify this woman by leaving the back door open to the NSA as treasonous, number one. So she's a traitor. And of course, right across the way there is the traitor's gate to the Tower of London. That's where if we were any, uh, any justice were to prevail, she'd be carted up to frog march through those steps right now because she is a traitor. And not only is she a traitor, but she's a stupid idiot because now her total company has an existential threat because she's allowed somebody to come in, the marauding army of Bitcoin, to put her out of her freaking misery. But again, we're, we're bringing it back to the top of the show. These pimp, the pimp got uh, sentenced to 100 years for beating somebody with an Air Jordan. He said he didn't know who hitting somebody with an air, that it was a lethal weapon. Uh, we're saying that Bill Gates and Marissa Mayer are going to argue we didn't know our systems were being used to dangerously, uh, you know, violate the constitutional rights of the users of our products and our systems and our stuff. Well, th this is the problem with omniscience. When you have a 360-degree, seven-day, 24-hour surveillance on every possible person in the network, you can't, in one hand, say, we justify stealing your money, and on the same breath, say, we don't know what's going on. So not only are you lying kleptocrats, but you're treasonous lying kleptocrats, and that is the basis for an insurrection. All right, we got to go on that note, and uh, thanks. Break free from Redmond syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stay tuned for the second half, a whole lot more. You know, I think one of the, the real turning points was the massacre at Tibia that we heard about in 1953. And Sharon had been given orders to create as much destruction as he could by Ben-Gurion. The Americans condemned this act. There were 70, you know, largely women and children killed. They condemned the act. They said the person who perpetrated this should be punished and so forth. Sharon established this policy of smashing the Palestinians and the Arabs and hitting them 10 times harder than they could hit Israel. It looks like, you know, they're at a den end here with, with the so-called peace process, which of course Sharon was against from the very, very beginning. He wanted to create small pockets of uh, Palestinian presence uh, in the West Bank that would be surrounded with Israeli settlements. And so that is his legacy today. Uh, and, you know, is, Israel stuck with that reality today uh, and is dealing with this um, question of uh, essentially apartheid. Millions around the globe struggle with hunger each day. What if someone offers a lifetime food supply, no charge? We in the church have taken a very strong position against GMO and we think that uh, these uh, genetically modified products are risk to, to health. 
There is no evidence that there's any problem with genetic engineering. Will you make a deal? Or is free cheese always in a mouse trap? I don't believe that, that uh, this is for, uh, forever free. Their primary motive is profit, not for humanity, <laughs> not for social justice. Golden Rice on RT. On June 16, 1941, we had a graduation party at school and the war broke out. The shops were always full of goods. In September, Leningrad was blocked. One day, Mum went and saw that all the shelves were empty. In November, they bombed the Badaevsky warehouses. It was the main storage place for all the food in the city. People were eating the earth because it had small traces of sugar in it. I tried to eat it as well, but I couldn't. That night, there was incredibly heavy bombing. There was a direct hit on that very shelter, and everyone was buried underneath. All of them were dead. Here on RT today, I'm Rory Susha. Welcome back to the Kaiser Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to turn to futurist, IT architect, and free software. Advocate Arian Campos. Arian, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Great to be here again. Tinfoil is the new black. Yeah. Explain. So we had a presentation by uh, Jake Applebaum. Um, where? where? Uh, it was in Hamburg at the CCC conference. CCC is the Chaos Computer Club. German Chaos Computer Club, oldest, biggest uh, computer hacker club in the world. They had their yearly congress, 9,000 people attended, which was all-time new record. I went a few years ago, and yeah. there was maybe less than 1,000. Now, yeah. Jacob Applebaum, just for folks to give him a little background, who is he? He is one of the uh, key people behind uh, the Tor technology that allows you to browse with safety, amongst other things, and one of the most effective digital civil liberties activist right now in the world, living in Berlin, no longer wants to live in the US. And he did a presentation on one of the more recent sort of NSA documents um, that have come out that shows that the kind of technologies that are now used for targeted access, so not just uh, the sweeping up your Gmail, but really going after your individual laptop, um, they they have a sort of this whole science fiction aspect to them where um, directed microwave pointed at laptops to then influence those machines from several miles away. Okay, so tinfoil is a new black. So, so in other words, the old, as recently as just a few months ago, if you describe what you just described, you would be condemned as part of the tinfoil hat-wearing crowd. You that would have Pino been called crazy. Called and, crazy. And now we have internal NSA documents that tell us that actually that's what they do, and they're quite proud of it. And actually. they can point at a laptop and just suck everything out of yeah, it. Yeah, they can, they can manipulate, influence a laptop, or, or read its data from sometimes even miles away by directing microwave energy at either the laptop or the person operating the laptop. All right, so um, let's uh, continue here. So uh, could global surveillance system with that, could it work without the complicity of Microsoft and Yahoo in providing uh, these intentionally shoddy software and backdoors? In other words, we've seen over the past few years the revelations, again, from yeah. the Snowden revelations, that Microsoft and Yahoo, they actually w compromise their own technology yep. to give the easy access, yep. backdoor access to, yep. for the NSA. Yep. It, w it, without their cooperation, would we see the level of surveillance invasiveness that we see? 
it would be a lot harder and a lot more expensive if they had to go after every individual well-secured system. If most of the computers in the world are already leaky by default when they come out of the box, then, of course, the NSA doesn't individually have to hack them and use the kind of advanced technologies that, that Jake showed um, last, uh, last month. So that's really for extreme cases where people use uh, high secure systems. Most of the systems, when you take them out of the box, are already leaky, thanks to companies like Microsoft. I would suspect, actually, that by agreeing to work with the U.S. government in that way, a company like Microsoft would get very uh, lenient attitude towards them when they are, say, you know, a convicted monopolist. So it works. Twice convicted. It, it, well, multiple convicted. Multiple, yes. multiple convicted, convicted predatory monopolists. Exactly, exactly. But they keep getting away with it, and you have to wonder why. And through Snowden, we may have stumbled on a reason. Is this about safety or about corporations just trying to get information for competitive advantage or for marketing purposes? I haven't seen any evidence that this has helped make anything or anyone safer. And I've been speaking to a lot of intelligence whistleblowers, so these are former uh, spooks, basically. And they all say this is not how you, you know, catch terrorists or catch evil people. But it works really well for industrial espionage, and it works really well for infiltrating activist groups, you know, whether it's an environmental activist or human rights activist. Those, so it's really good for democratic repression, basically, of... of, of those kinds of groups. Yeah, I have a question that kind of a, I've heard anecdotally from different sources, maybe you can shed some light mm -hmm. on this, that um, the payoffs to these corporations from the government to make it less obvious that they're just paying them off to mm -hmm. hide the accounting yeah. of the payoffs, they're engaged to some degree in click fraud. So in other words, if the NSA is got a backdoor into Yahoo or these other companies, uh, they are generating billions of click fraud mm -hmm. clicks which, of course, generate ad revenue for Yahoo, yeah. and then yeah. their company is based on a multiple of that revenue and profit based on ad revenue. But is it, is it true, what my source is telling me, that up to the, uh, there's a significant portion of revenue is generated by government click fraud? I, I haven't seen that document, but that would be a wonderful way for the U.S. government to reward companies that are willing to help them. I mean, there are obviously all kinds of other ways, such as not convicting them as a monopolist or not give them the super-duper IRS audit. So there's lots of ways that companies could be remunerated, but this could be one of them, yeah. Google says they were unaware that the NSA had broken into their systems. Do you believe them? It's possible that there are people within Google who didn't know. Um, Is it possible that Google's stock price as a multiple of revenue mm -hmm. Uh, is in fact the product of uh, this quid pro quo between the government exchanging click fraud for information. It certainly helps the U.S. government that a U.S. company is so dominant in this field. So the U.S. government, by making, by maybe helping Google to become dominant, creates a situation where they control the company that is most dominant in that field. So okay. they, they certainly have an interest. That's obvious, yeah. Okay, so it's a symbiotic relationship. In other words, without the surveillance that you've said and many others have made no one safer, uh, the revenues for these huge companies would be cut in half potentially or more, yeah. and the stock prices would crash. But of course, they all have interest. And of course, in Congress, it's legal for senators and congressmen to own shares in these companies. Yes. So they're making money from the bastardization of the democratic process in America through click fraud, through surveillance, and through propaganda. Let's talk about Yahoo's CEO. Uh, she said that for her not to cooperate with the NSA was treasonous. Your thoughts? Well, it might land her in legal difficulty. So, you know, it, in some legal term under the Patriot Act, she may be technically correct. Although, of course, she could have done a lot of other things over the last year, such as speaking up about it and maybe taking a pay cut or something. But she, apparently she thought that another choice would have been would have been better. Okay, you're Dutch. Yep. Okay, but uh, so you're not American. Mm -hmm. In America, they have the Constitution and Declaration of Independence. Yep. And it, it, looking at those documents, one would think that a statement like this from Yahoo's CEO would indicate just the opposite, that to cooperate with an entity that is compromising the democratic principles mm -hmm. of the population, that would be treasonous. She yeah. has committed treason overtly 
And now you're Dutch, yeah. and you're not American, but from your observation, I point this out, that yeah. you're not American, but from the outside observing it, would you argue with my, my, my interpretation here? No, sure. So if, if you say that the Constitution and, and the spirit of the Constitution is the highest law of the land, then clearly it's a treasonous act. But if you say, look, I know from a practical standpoint as a CEO of a company that if I don't play ball with the NSA, they're going to do all these terrible things to me and to my company under the Patriot Act, and so I'm just going to you know, go along to get along. I, I, could, I could understand how people would do it. I mean, I don't approve. I think it's a really bad choice. And I think, you know, later when you look back on it, I think many of these CEOs will, will regret it, that they, they, they were part of the problem in, instead of being part of the solution. But, but I, would th I think that CEOs who don't cooperate will be pressured maybe into bankruptcy by the very same government. Sure. But uh, in the old days, we would call those people traitors. And yeah. they would be executed. Yeah, but, but we, don't, we don't have that kind of fortitude yeah, anymore. Yeah, America's yeah. become a fat, lazy, donut eating, chomping, no good neck. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Tell us about turmoil and turbine and why anyone with dignity and self respect would want to hide, I guess, is part of this question. But tell us about turmoil and turbine. Uh, so I don't even know all the details of those, of those programs, but these are um, uh, systems that are analyzing in real time stuff that people do on the internet. Um, uh, whether it's social media or maybe even systems outside the U.S. So it's this very multi-layered uh, system of, of analyzing everybody's move online all the time. Okay, so we heard about last year PRISM. Yes. And then we heard yes. about, uh, no, this is another one of these yeah, types of programs. So they have, they have, well, that we now know of dozens, and we've only seen a fraction of the Snowden documents, so there's much more to come. Um, what, what's going on in the Netherlands? Okay, the Netherlands is, is remarkably is... little. Uh, in fact, um, I think there's been now uh, one letter from the government to the uh, to the parliament that basically says we have taken note of this situation. We are following the matter with interest, and if there's anything else, we'll be informed. So there is there is right now there is no policy position of the Dutch government on the fact that all its citizens are being monitored all the time, which is quite worrying. Yeah, well, it's worrying, and it seems a bit unusual, in that the, uh, the, the Netherlands has a reputation uh, for uh, being uh, progressive yeah. and, and for civil rights, I guess yeah, you could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. So here's a clear violation of those rights. Yeah, so very clear. So what is it, um, and now recently, in the last few years, you know, the politics has gone right in the Netherlands. Is this part of that move? And is there a movement, do you, are you aware of a movement in the Netherlands right now that can effectively push back against what appears to be a supine government who's being rolled over by American intelligence agencies? I think the, 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 the political pressure out of the U.S. on the Dutch government is very forceful and very effective, apparently, because, yeah, they do completely roll over, and uh, our media system essentially is part of that problem and acquiesces into not having the debates. So Amsterdam is the European headquarters for corporations like... Google and all, all the Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, Microsoft. Oh yeah, no, they, they right. all so they, they all they, run their accounting fraud through Amsterdam. Yeah. And they run the accounting yeah. fraud through yeah. Amsterdam. You know, through the uh, intellectual property accounting yeah. fraud, yeah. whether it's uh, Bono over there at U2 yeah. or the other intellectual. Yeah. They're property. all Dutch foundations. The Dutch sandwich yeah. runs through Amsterdam. Yes. Yes. Or it's the Irish sandwich that runs through Amsterdam, yeah. but it's some kind of sandwich. Yeah. It's a threesome. Yeah. It's an unholy yeah. threesome of yeah, some type. It's, it's something very naughty, yeah. All right, so we got about two minutes left. I want to return to the Computer Ca uh, Chaos Club, mm -hmm. uh, which every year they have this um, get-together. Yeah. It's been growing. Yeah. Uh, I think Glenn Greenwald actually did the keynote speech yes. uh, yes. this, this uh, year. Um, I know the folks behind mm -hmm. the CCC pretty well. Uh, and. Uh, how important is CCC going forward? But I guess the more question is, what other tidbits of interesting came out of the conference? Because I missed it this year. Mm -hmm. What are a couple, a couple of highlights? Um, I was m most of the most of the really interesting talks, in, in my opinion, were really about detailing um, everything we now know, thanks to uh, thanks to the Snowden revelations, and really analyzing it. And then there were people who actually, literally, were physically going around the planets you know, photographing and documenting all kinds of black sites and trying to um, to get information. I think the single thing that really, that I missed at least, is really having a good discussion with these 9,000 smart people is sort of, now what do we do? When Angela Merkel compared NSA to the Stasi mm -hmm. recently, did that resonate in Germany? Oh yeah, no, in Germany there is, there is um, much more resistance to this. So. In Germany, you now have informal gatherings, crypto parties in most major cities once a month or okay, every weekend. Okay, last question. We only got 30 seconds. Right. Bitcoin, will it be immune from the NSA scoundrels? 
I don't know. I think there's probably a whole bunch of very clever people making sure it doesn't undermine the dollar. Because we all know what happened to Saddam Hussein and Gaddafi when they undermined the dollar or tried to. And so Bitcoin, On the technological Bitcoin Bitcoin front, though, would you, your instincts are that it will survive an NSA onslaught, or are you just too early to say? It's, it's too early. To, it's possible that somebody will find a leak in the crypto, but it looks very solid up to now. Fair enough. Okay. Thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Great to be here. That's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I'd like to thank our guest, Ariane Campos. If you'd like to get in touch, tweet us at Kaiser Report. Until next time, bye, y'all.